Hello again, we're gonna pick up where we left off. In the last video, we looked at the flare brush. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at a different brush that I created for Corel Painter 2015. We're gonna come over here to particles, and we're gonna come down, and what we're looking for now is going to be the Flow Sparkler Glow. Now this one you can see already has the name Glow and it already has Glow enabled, so this is in fact a Glow brush. If I were to go ahead and click and drag, you can see, yep, we're getting Glow effects just like what we would expect. Now this brush is very different than our flare brush. It's gonna give us a very different type of effect. It's more of sort of kind of like a speckly airbrush type of effect. And that's where this name flow comes into play. This is a flow brush and it's basically spraying down particles. That's more or less the idea of flow brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a control A and backspace just to clear the canvas so that we can focus on what this brush does for right now. So this brush is meant to be more for like magical type of effects. If you stay and press hard in one area, you're gonna get a bigger sparkle. If you press lightly, you're gonna get a thin, more of a linear type of effect. Now, this isn't everything that this brush can do. It can do quite a few different things, and there's some different ways that we might want to modify this in order to get the effects that we're looking for. Now, the first thing that you will probably want to do with this brush that's going to very much change the way that the brush works is the way that we're tracking our brush tracking. Our brush calibration is going to be very important to the way in which we're getting these marks. And this is true of all of these particle brushes. They're very, very sensitive to your brush tracking. Now, right now, you can see in my brush calibration panel, I do not have brush calibration turned on. But if I turn that on, you're gonna see that immediately I get a very different result. You can see if I press lightly, I'm no longer getting that type of effect here that's very dense. It's breaking up more automatically. And the reason why is because it's reacting to my pressure information very differently than it was before. So when you're working with these particle brushes, do make sure that you're paying attention to your brush calibration because it's gonna have a big, big impact on the effects that you're getting. Now, the other thing that I wanna look at when we're working with this guy here is the fact that this is a flow brush. So we're gonna come over here to the flow particles panel, and we're gonna go ahead and pay attention right now to the position jitter. Now, the position jitter is the thing that's giving this guy the effect where it starts out kind of dense and then it breaks up the harder that we push. So again, I'll do a control A and backspace just to clear that canvas, and I'll press lightly, and then I'll press harder, and you can see it breaks up the harder that I push. That's due to the fact that this is tied to pressure. So if I were to turn that off and set that to none, you'll see that it breaks up pretty much all the time. And that's just a different type of look that you can get. I happen to like it being pressure because we have a little bit more control here. But the idea here is that you can reduce the position jitter so that it doesn't break up no matter how hard you press. It stays more dense, okay? So that's one thing that you can do here. I'm gonna set that back up to 100%. Another thing that you can do is you can control the opacity and set that to pressure. So right now I'm just gonna come over here to the opacity panel and I'm gonna set this to pressure. And I'm gonna go ahead now and you can see as I press lightly, I'm just getting a few little tidbits of that. And as I press harder, it's gonna become more and more obvious. So again, control A, backspace. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of scribble like so. And you can see that this could be very useful for creating certain types of magical effects or clouds of fairy dust, anything like that. I mean, this can be very, very useful. And you can see just by changing a few settings here, in this case, the only setting that I really changed is my brush calibration and I've set my opacity to pressure. If I turn the brush calibration off, remember, we're gonna get different results because that pressure response is now different. It's set to whatever the default is for painter instead of my custom brush calibration for this particular brush. And so we're gonna get different results and do pay attention to those things. So all that said, I'm just gonna come back over here now. I'm gonna reset this brush back to its default settings, which looks something like this. You can see, again, that's very different than what we were just getting up here. Control A and backspace. And now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how we can create stars with this because this is one of the uses for this brush. Now, the first thing I wanna point out to you is that I'm using HSV. If you're not seeing HSV, come over here to your color panel and come over and say that we want to, instead of display as RGB, make sure that we're displaying as HSV if you're not seeing HSV. Now what I wanna do is I just wanna get a gray, so I'm gonna pull it all the way over and then I'm gonna come down to roughly about 30 and I'll just type in 30 for the sake of precision here so that we're getting a 30 value gray. So now what I wanna do is I wanna come over here to brushes and I wanna do a record stroke. So I'm gonna record that stroke, I'm gonna press and hold, right? So there's my star. And now what I wanna do is I just wanna come over here now to brushes and I wanna say playback stroke. And so now everywhere I click, I'm going to get a star. And because I'm using this marbled flow map, you're gonna see that the stars are different sizes and they're gonna have different qualities. And so this can be something that can be very useful 
for quickly generating a starry sky where you don't want to get in there and you don't want to have just plain old dots. You want to have some sort of sparkly quality to those dots. But at the same time, you want them to be, you know, different sizes and different intensities. The flow map is going to help us take care of that. And the playback stroke is going to allow us to always have just a star shape instead of having a sparkly line. Now, again, if we come back over here and we set this to pressure again, you're going to see that we're going to get more of a denser kind of star. It's going to be less sparkly looking and maybe more sort of softer. So again, a control A and backspace. And I'll just go ahead and make these marks. And you can see that this is actually fairly photographic. I mean, this is something that we can definitely use when we're working. So again, when you're thinking about how to make something like a starry effect or a sparkly effect for your stars, then think about using this brush. Because again, with playback stroke, your marble flow map, and just setting it up like so, you can really create a quick starry sky very, very easily. Thank you.